So let's take a look at how we can reduce moray. And I don't want to say remove. That's the thing. Moray is going to be damaging. When you try to remove it, you're going to soften the image. You're going to make the colors inaccurate. But let's, let's do the best we can. Um, if you go into the folder moray and open up the image called pattern and color moray. Now this one has two types of moray in it. There's pattern and, you ready for this? Color. And you think, wait a minute. The patterns I can understand. You've got the, you know, the, the slight offset of the grid of this fabric against the grid of the sensor. But where's the color coming from? Remember, each color photograph is actually three black and white photographs. There's a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And because of the position of your sensors, remember your sensor can only see black and white. It only knows how much light it saw. It doesn't know what color that light was. So they put color filters over top of every single pixel. So the green information might be gotten from these pixels over here. The red may be from this one up here and the blue from these over here. So the, even the pixels where they get the color information is slightly offset, which can result in slightly different moray patterns in different parts of the image. And anytime you have differences in the color channels, you have colors. Well, that, that sucks to a fairly large degree. What are we going to do about that? Do you guys remember an image where we added a sky behind a castle using a blending mode, and then when we zoomed in on the corner of the castle and the trees, there was this blue fringe. What was that blue fringe called again? It starts with a C. Chromatic aberration, basically aberrant colors. How did we deal with that? We've got a color here. We don't want the color to look like this. What color should this be? Yeah, whatever the color of, of his jacket is. So to get rid of the chromatic aberration, we made a new transparent layer. And did we simply start painting the color we wanted on that layer? We did, but after one other step. Uh, what are blending modes? Something to do with making smoothies? Liquify, puree? No, it's a set of rules that defines how a layer is going to interact with the layers below it. So what if I made a new transparent layer, and if I sampled the color I wanted, say I grabbed the lapel color here and I painted it over, there we go, look at that. That moray is gone. Are we done? Ready to send it off to the client? Yes. One more step. Right now we painted the beige on that, and it just, it just painted right over top of it. What if we could limit the abilities of this layer? What if we could limit this layer to only being able to impose its color? onto the pixels below. Instead of its brightness, its contrast, its saturation, and its color, all the information about it, what if it could only impose its color? How could we do that? What could we change the blending mode to so that it only imposes its color onto the pixels below? What do you think? So it only chooses the color of the color more. Yeah, color blending mode. Let's give that a try. Let's go from normal down to color. And we now have this nicely limited layer. So I'm going to sample the color of his jacket. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush, or just hit B on the keyboard. Option click on his lapel, or wherever I know the color of his jacket is right. And watch this. I'm going to paint that over the color more. And don't be afraid to resample, because I'm getting some weird colors there. Actually, the first one I did, I got a little bit grayish. Hang on. Aha! OK, my, um, my color sampler, my eyedropper. Uh, notice mine is set to point sample. That's why mine was coming out all wacky. What does point sample mean for my eyedropper? You're taking one pixel. One single pixel. And if you go in close, you can see that every pixel is slightly different. Some are a little bit grayer. Some are a little beiger. Some are a little bit redder. With the eyedropper set to point sample, it clicks exactly the color you choose. Uh, what should I probably do to get a more accurate representation of this? Uh, five five. Yeah, probably something in this range. This would start getting you know, stuff all over the place. But yeah, 5 by 5, 3 by 3. This will take an average of the 25 pixels around it. So you'll get a more accurate sampling. So yeah, sorry about that. OK, so this lets us deal with the color more. But sadly, we're still left with Oh, look at that. A bunch of nasty light and dark stripes. That's the pattern moray. And in fact, the pattern moray is a little bit more common. What do you think we could do to deal with this pattern moray? OK, well, here's what we're not going to do. 
Take a look on the screen for a second. I'm going to make a new layer here. I'm going to grab a clone stamp, and I'll start cloning this pattern more away. I'll start doing this, and, and just smudge the heck out of everything. I mean, I totally could do that, and I would end up with this kind of flat panel sort of look. And, and I see a lot of people doing that to try to tone it down. What if we did it with a little bit more control? And let me show you what I mean by that. How many people have noise-canceling headphones? There's a microphone on the outside of the headphones, and let's say you're working beside a dehumidifier. You're just making this sound. The microphone picks up the sound of the dehumidifier, and then it records it, plays it back, offset by half the frequency, and sound, if you've looked at the, the sine waves, the uh, audio waveforms in Premiere or any audio program, is just high, low, high, low, high pressure, low pressure, those pressure waves traveling through the air. And if the high of the reverse noise, the anti-noise, the offset by half, meets a low, a peak meets a trough, it averages out to nothing. And here it's already nothing anyway. Here it averages out. And you end up with something like that. Totally cancels it. And you're thinking, okay, what does that have to do with Moray? Well, take a look at this. Does this kind of look like that audio waveform? We have a peak, a trough, a peak, a trough. What if I could offset this by half? And let's say I had my brush set to 50% opacity. The peak would meet a trough, which would average out to 50% gray. The trough would meet a peak, which would average out to 50% gray. Let's give that a try. Watch this. I'm going to make a new transparent layer here. I'm going to grab my clone stamp, make sure it's set to current and below. I'm going to drop my opacity to 50%, so I just hit 5 on the keyboard. And if I do an option click, I'm going to sample this trough here, this dark line. Boink! Sample that. Now I'm going to move over to a light line. And it averages to 50% gray. So where we had a wrinkle, we can take, we can even go the other way. I can take a peak onto a trough, and voila. I wonder if we could do that on this image. Well, first off, it's not as consistent as that fake thing that I generated. That was all like perfect. But we do still see peak, trough, peak, trough, light band, dark band, light band, dark band. And at a certain frequency, notice how this frequency doesn't really change up here. Down here it does. Over here it does. But if we focus on a small area at a time, and here's the trick. Don't try to do a great big area. Don't say, I'm going to sample this and then do this entire front here. But we have a specific frequency across here. I'm going to match that frequency. So I'm going to take my clone stamp, a bit of a smaller brush here. And if I option click on a dark line, and then I move over to a light line, and here's something to watch out for. If I sample this dark line, I shouldn't go to the light line right beside it, because that'll give a slightly offset, kind of smeared sort of look to it. So if I sample this dark line, maybe I'll jump over to that light line on the other side of the first light line. And that should give enough distance that you don't see that smearing effect. So I'm going to option click here, blink, move over to this light line, and watch this. So we can soften that moray away. Now, like I said, this isn't something that you can completely remove. You are going to be doing damage to the image. You can slightly see the fabric in this jacket here, which in a way is what caused that moray in the first place. This is going to soften it out. And notice how I didn't do a very large area. I kind of hit a little bit. Um, maybe I'll move up to here. Look at that. The frequency is slightly different. So I'll sample this dark line, jump up to this light line, and soften that out. Over here, it's a much higher frequency. Same deal. Take a light line onto a dark line and average it out. But notice I'm doing very small bits, and I'm going for the worst of it first. And watch out for things like this hard edge of the lapel. Um, like, for example, watch this. If I sample here boink, on this dark line, but look how far away I am from the edge of the lapel. So I sample here, then I move to the light line, but now I'm closer to the lapel. Watch what happens. See that double image, that kind of blurring effect. As long as I stay parallel to this lapel, let's say I sample the dark line here, and I'll use the edge of my uh, circle there. I can see just a little bit of crescent in there. Go to a lighter line, make sure it's overlapping the same, and I can run right along the edge without getting that blurring effect. So work your way around the image, and do a before and after every now and then. Turn off the eyeball on this layer. 
You want to keep the roundness of the fabric the way the curves are falling. See how it's darker here, lighter over here? That gives a sense of the roundness of the torso. If you flatten everything out to the same shade of gray, it starts to look like a flat panel of cardboard as opposed to a round suit. So take a look at the lighting, make sure it matches up. You just got to remember, when you get into a different frequency, you can see this has, you know, a jump of this to this to this to this. Here, it's quite a bit smaller. So a smaller jump is needed. So if I were to sample down here on this dark line, notice it's a much smaller jump to get to this light line to average that out. And here, it's a much larger jump. You can see we have dark light, dark light, dark light. So if I sample here, I'm jumping a much larger distance. So the trick is just getting the right frequency of that moray.